Hey, Retcon Raider here. Today I thought we'd take a quick look at another low-budget indie game that almost slipped right past my radar. Today I thought we'd talk about Atom RPG by the Atom Team. So, what is Atom RPG? Well, it's a retro-styled computer role-playing game with a point-based character building system and tactical turn-based combat, all set against a post-apocalyptic backdrop inspired by games like Fallout and Stalker. Atom RPG is an indie title that's been under development off and on for almost a decade. The original tech demo was released back in 2009, but the development ran into trouble shortly afterwards, only getting back on track in 2015. It was officially greenlit on Steam in 2016, and the Atom team ran a modestly successful crowdfunding campaign on Kickstarter in April of 2017. It was just recently released through Steam's Early Access program, and the developers are currently hoping to finish production early next year. The game's setting takes place in an alternate timeline where a breakdown in relations between the Eastern and Western Bloc led to a full-blown nuclear war in 1986, effectively bringing the modern world to an end. Atom RPG takes place nine years after that conflict in the irradiated ruins of the Soviet Union. While humanity has begun the slow process of rebuilding, it's an uphill battle as people struggle with raiders, cannibals, radiation, and even stranger things. The player takes on the role of an undercover operative who works for an organization known as Atom. This group is dedicated towards rebuilding the world by any means possible, specializing in the recovery and repair of pre-war technology that could theoretically be used to help restore the world to the way it used to be. Although the main storyline is far from finished at the moment, the general gist of it is that a group of Atom operatives have gone missing while searching for a mysterious pre-war bunker, and the player has been tasked with finding out what happened to them. Unfortunately, shortly after the player sets off on their mission, they're ambushed by a group of thieves who steal all of their equipment. Thus, the player is left to fend for themselves in the harsh and unforgiving wasteland. With no food or equipment to their name and no way to return to base to resupply, they have no choice but to continue their investigation by any means possible. From a story standpoint, the game actually seems to be quite well written, though it does suffer from the occasional translation issues. Still, despite that, it does a good job of presenting the player with a rather comprehensive and compelling post-apocalyptic world set against the backdrop of the 1980s-era Soviet Union. From a gameplay standpoint, Adam is heavily influenced by classic turn-based computer RPGs, especially Fallout. The character building system, the user interface, the turn-based combat, it all seems deliberately designed to mimic the systems that were used in the original Fallout titles. The developers even go so far as to state that their character system is inspired by GURPS, the same tabletop role-playing game that was originally going to be used for the first Fallout title. Though, to be perfectly honest, the system featured in Atom RPG seems to have a lot more in common with the special system that Interplay ended up using in favor of GURPS. For example, in Atom RPG, the player starts with 40 points to distribute amongst seven basic attributes, each of which is parallel to one of the basic attributes from Fallout. Likewise, Atom RPG also presents the player with an assortment of 15 percentile-based skills to choose from again emulating most of the 18 skills that were included in the original Fallout games. The player's starting skill values will be determined by a combination of their skill points and their starting attributes, and as the player gains levels, they will continue to gain an additional amount of skill points as determined by their intellect attribute. The main point of departure between the two character creation systems is that Atom RPG lacks the perk and trait system used in most of the original Fallout titles though the player can end up learning special abilities called Distinctions, and the developers have already announced that they're planning to implement a trait system similar to the one featured in Fallout. Overall, the current character creation is a bit simplistic, but it's also fairly satisfying, especially once the player starts seeing how their choice of attributes and skills can influence the world around them. It doesn't quite meet the level of depth provided by the games that Atom RPG is trying to emulate, but it does at least manage to come relatively close. 
The exploration and general gameplay also draw clear influence from a number of classic CRPGs. Exploration is handled in real time, as the player investigates their surroundings, interacts with objects, and chats with the other people that they encounter during their travels. The player can bring up a simple menu when interacting with various objects or individuals, which in turn will often allow them to use at least one or two of their character's skills. While this does manage to reasonably emulate a number of classic CRPGs, it still falls just a bit short in some areas. For example, there's a stealth attribute, but no actual active stealth mode. Stealth is handled as a passive attribute with no clear visual indication of whether the character is actually hidden. The game also tends to obscure most of the percentile chances, so the player is forced to make most of their skill checks blind. The player will know that they can try to pick a lock or steal some rubles, but they won't know what the actual chances of success might be. This can end up leading to a lot of trial and error, which in turn may end up leading to a lot of save scumming, depending on what type of player you happen to be. Dialogue is handled with old-school menu-based dialogue options. Like in many classic CRPGs, the player's attribute and skills are often referenced during conversations, with many potential rewards and optional side quests being gated behind certain attributes or skill checks. Perhaps even more impressively, the vast majority of NPCs that the player will meet, outside of random encounters anyway, are unique individuals with their own unique names, unique character portraits, and unique dialogue to share. Now, the dialogue system can be a little clunky at times. For example, many conversations follow the same basic patterns, and most dialogue options remain on the menu even after you've already used them. But overall, it's pretty well done and retains a nice retro feel. As the player travels the world and meets various people, they'll slowly accumulate a growing number of side quests, many of which can be handled in multiple ways. It's up to the player to determine what kind of character they want to play. They can be an altruistic hero if they want to, but they can just as easily be a greedy opportunist or a cold-hearted killer, as long as they're willing to accept the consequences of their actions. In fact, the game will even allow the player to attack any NPC they want, though this can end up resulting in a swift and bloody death. Once combat has been triggered, the game switches over to a turn-based combat system that, again, seems very heavily inspired by the one featured in the early Fallout franchise. Combat is handled one turn at a time, with the characters acting in order based on their initiative scores and receiving a number of action points determined by their dexterity attribute. While there are some small differences, for example, Atom RPG uses a square-based grid rather than a hex-based one, there are also many parallels. Battles are all about isolating one opponent at a time, taking them down before the player can be overwhelmed by sheer number. Weapons are broken into five categories, small guns, large guns, melee, martial arts, and thrown weapons, and the player can equip up to two weapons at a time. Most weapons have at least two or three different types of attacks, and most can be used to make special aimed attacks that will target a foe's individual body parts. And when the player takes a bit of damage themselves, they'll be relying on armor, which grants them three defensive attributes, armor class, armor resistance, and damage threshold, all of which should sound pretty familiar to any fan of the Fallout series. While the combat system certainly succeeds in appealing to a player's sense of nostalgia, it might actually be a little too simplistic for people who are used to more modern game designs. That's not to say that it's bad, just that you shouldn't go into Atom RPG expecting things like a comprehensive cover system or fancy special abilities. Your options in combat will generally boil down to fighting, fleeing, or some combination of the two. But it is worth mentioning that the developers are planning on improving the current battle mechanics. Beyond that, the game also includes a number of newer mechanics that were never featured in the original Fallout games. For example, Atom RPG features a fairly basic survival system. Over time, the player's character will become hungry and they'll start building up deadly toxins in their system, eventually resulting in death if the player doesn't tend to their basic needs. While the player can theoretically take care of these needs with basic food and water items, they'll get better results if they make use of the game's camping interface. 
The player accesses this interface by setting up camp while they're exploring the world map, which gives them the opportunity to properly prepare their food or to prepare other consumable items, each of which comes with their own benefits and potential drawbacks. Atom RPG also features a basic crafting system, though at the moment it is very bare bones. During the player's travels, they'll occasionally find crafting recipes which can be used to make various useful items. And particularly innovative players can also experiment by blindly slotting items into their crafting interface to see if it creates something they can use. At the moment, there only appear to be a few basic recipes in place, allowing the player to create things like shivs, hide clothing, and time bombs. But the developers have teased at a number of more creative crafting recipes that may be added to the game in the future, such as the somewhat mean-spirited Rat Grenade. Visually, the game actually looks surprisingly good, especially considering the game's rather low budget. While most of the games that inspired Atom RPG presented the player with a fixed, isometric view of the playing field, Atom RPG instead presents the player with a 3D environment that allows for a modest range of camera adjustment. The result is a game that looks very similar to the style of Wasteland 2, though I would actually argue that Atom RPG looks slightly better despite having a significantly lower budget. The audio is also surprisingly pleasant, again drawing heavy inspiration from Fallout and Wasteland 2, albeit with a Eurocentric twist. The game currently features over a dozen different audio tracks, ranging from light, jazzy music to gloomy, atmospheric tracks. It's nothing groundbreaking, but it certainly accomplishes what it sets out to do. Overall, I'll admit, I was a bit skeptical when I first started looking into this project. I tend to set my expectations pretty low when I see an indie project that's rooted so heavily in nostalgia. It's easy to say that your game was inspired by classic, well-respected games like Fallout, but it's very rare for an indie developer to actually succeed at making a game that lives up to the original. And in this case? Well, I don't think Atom RPG has quite lived up to what they're aspiring to be, but I will say that from what I've seen so far, they're certainly moving in the right direction. While I've only played the game for about 8 hours so far, I've thoroughly enjoyed most of what I've seen, and I'm thoroughly impressed that they managed to accomplish so much on such a small budget. Of course, it's important to remember that this isn't a finished product. Not yet, anyway. The current version of the game actually starts pretty strong, aside from the occasional issues with the translation or the tooltips. But as the player progresses beyond the first few areas, it quickly becomes evident that there's still a lot of content that needs to be implemented. Don't get me wrong, the current Early Access version of the game does feature a decent number of locations to explore, though most of those locations are fairly small, and it does present the player with at least a dozen quests to complete, but this is a far cry from what the developers have been promising. According to the pitch that the Atom team made on Kickstarter earlier this year, the final game will feature a 30-plus hour non-linear campaign, over 300 NPCs to interact with, over 25 different types of creatures to fight, over 100 locations to explore, including at least two major cities and a personal base for the player, over 30 different weapons, more cutscenes, a basic crafting system, character traits, a tutorial, and even more. Now, the developers are currently hoping to have the game finished by May of 2018, but given the sheer volume of content that still needs to be implemented, well, let's just say I suspect that might be an overly ambitious development schedule. Still, the Atom team has managed to surprise me with what they've accomplished so far, so maybe they'll surprise me again. And even if the game does end up running over schedule, well, I think this would actually be a project that would be well worth waiting for. Like I said, everything I've seen so far seems very promising, so I can't wait to see what it looks like once the game is finished. Atom RPG is currently available through Steam's Early Access program for the rather modest price of just 15 US dollars. So if this sounds like the sort of game that you might be interested in, then I encourage you to go check it out. You can find out more about Atom RPG by visiting the official website, the official YouTube channel, the crowdfunding campaign page on Kickstarter, or the store page on Steam. Links are in the description.